Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about prayer, and now that we've talked about prayers in general, I thought I'd take a few episodes to look at some of the prayers that are commonly said to examine what those prayers mean and how they express various aspects of the faith. This time, the prayer that Jesus himself taught, the Lord's Prayer. At a certain time and place, Jesus was praying, and the disciples apparently noticed this because one of them said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Luke chapter 11 tells the whole story. In reply, Jesus gave them a prayer, perhaps the most perfect prayer ever suggested. I guess that's no surprise that when Jesus composed a prayer, it would turn out to be perfect. The Lord's Prayer goes like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. This prayer is full of requests and petitions, clearly reminding us that we're dependent on God. But if you think more about the precise kinds of petitions, you might start to see that this prayer is perfect in at least two ways. First, it contains every last thing that we as Christians should want in this life. Secondly, this prayer shows the order in which we should want them, from the most important request to the least important. Let's look over the prayer, one piece at a time, to see this in action. Our Father, who art in heaven. The prayer begins by directly addressing God the Father respectfully, not just to make it clear who the prayer is directed to, but to help us to remember who we're talking to when we pray. Hallowed be thy name. The first petition of the prayer is for God's name to be hallowed. This means that we want the name of God to be honored as holy. After all, if people honor God as holy, they'll have more respect for him, and that will make them much more likely to obey his commands. The greatest injustice in existence is how little God is honored for his greatness and his good gifts to us. So this is certainly the most important request that a person can make. Thy kingdom come. The second petition is less important than honoring God, because it doesn't have to do with justice to God at all. Instead, it has to do with the fate of the world. By asking for God's kingdom to come, what people are really asking for is the kingdom of heaven, and not just that they themselves will die and go to heaven. That would be them coming into the kingdom, but it wouldn't be the kingdom coming. No, what's being talked about here is that the kingdom of heaven will come upon the earth, bringing with it all good things and God's goodness and justice. In particular, this petition involves asking that Jesus reign over everything in the world. This would be the best possible thing for the world, so this is much more important than any other world-based request that we could make. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. If God's kingdom comes, his will will also be done. However, just because God's will is done, that doesn't mean his kingdom has come. Because of that, asking for God's will to be done isn't quite as important a request as asking for his kingdom to come. However, it's still incredibly important for the world. After all, God's will is for everyone to turn to him and be saved. So if only God's will could be done, the world could be saved. Give us this day our daily bread. Here we come to the basics of life. The term daily bread refers to food and drink, what we need in order for our bodies to survive. Our survival isn't as important as the name of God being honored or his will being done, because those are things that can save souls. But after the salvation of souls, the next most important thing is physical survival. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Unless we're alive, we can't really do much to affect our relationship with God, but having prayed for survival, we can now move on to another very important thing, doing right by God. What keeps us from God? Our sins. Therefore, the next thing on the list is for God to forgive those sins so that we could return to a good relationship with him. And lead us not into temptation. Once God has forgiven our sins, the next most important thing is to keep from committing any more. We commit sins when we're tempted into sinful acts by the circumstances of our lives, and we often give in under pressure. 
By asking God not to lead us into temptation, we're really asking him to help protect us from the danger of future sins. If we're forgiven of our past sins and avoid future sins, our relationship with God will be a good one. But there's one more petition to make. But deliver us from evil. Even if our relationship with God is good, bad things can still happen to us which can hurt us or cause us problems. Evil things can be done to us, like betrayal, deception, con jobs, rip-offs, or even the premature death of a loved one. Even something as simple as slamming your finger in a door is a bad thing, which we'd probably like to be protected from. By asking God to deliver us from evil, we're requesting his protection against things like that. This kind of protection from bad experiences, or the evil deeds of others, isn't nearly as important as our survival or our relationship with God, which is why it's the last petition in the prayer. If we're delivered from evil, if bad things don't happen to us, we'll be more fairly treated, and all other things being equal, that's really how things ought to be. Next time, where do we ever get the Hail Mary? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.